This 17-year-old girl is dressed in a sexy professional outfit, such as a short suit skirt and black stockings. She crossed the street in high heels to a hotel, then took the elevator to the sixth floor, walked into room 6095. Do you think she was meeting her boyfriend in private? Not really. She's here to serve guests and start a date. It turns out, Isabel is a call girl, but the client waiting for her was a gray-haired but strong 80-year-old man. He then proceeded to play sports with Isabel after the sex. Isabel changes into a student outfit and switches between the two roles with ease. Isabel goes on a beach vacation with her family. On the beach, she meets a handsome sunny guy named Victor. Isabel feels the hormonal side of Victor. That night, Isabel goes out on a date with Victor without her stepfather and mother's knowledge. The two of them went to have ice cream together and then Saturday on the beach chatting. As the conversation progressed, they had sex. This was Isabel's first sexual experience. Isabel is escorted home safely by Victor and chases away her brother who is lying in bed. The next day, the family celebrates Isabel's 17th birthday. Her face is full of smiles. Soon after, the summer vacation ends and the family moves out of the beach house. And Isabel's first love affair was over. Back at school, Isabel became overwhelmed by the pleasure of experiencing her first sexual encounter. She was unable to interact with her classmates as much as she used to. She became inaccessible and uncommunicative. Isabel gradually began to doubt herself. Was my youth this boring? So Isabel became a call girl. She posts messages on the internet and contacted customers through a cell phone. They agreed on a location and she went to the place provided by the consumer. She goes into the room and meets George's for the first time. Then the two of them started doing exercises. The next day, Isabel goes to the bathroom to change into sexy professional clothes. This time the meeting is with a handsome middle-aged man. He looks at the beautiful Isabel and is smitten. They went to a room and got down to business. But apparently, the second guest wasn't as gentlemanly as George's. I have never seen such a jerk of a man. He was looking for a call girl outside and only paid half of the money after having sex. Isabel asked him why he gave her less money. However, he told her to get lost or he would tell her parents about it. Isabel didn't want her parents to know that she was doing this. So she left the room in silence. Isabel sits on a bench and stares. But soon she received a message from a third client. Isabel arrives at the location provided by the client. What happened next was a bit boring and I skipped it. Suddenly the customer said dismissively, Once you're a whore, you're a whore for life. Isabel didn't say anything but just looked at him quietly. That day, Isabel went to the theater with her family to see the opera. Suddenly a familiar figure appeared in front of her. Georges had brought his daughter to the opera. After the opera, Isabel just watched him in silence. But Georges noticed Isabel. They looked at each other for a moment. Then Isabel put on her professional clothes again and took the elevator to a hotel as usual. She entered room 6095. From then on she and Georges saw each other frequently. But this time, Georges just poured Isabel a drink and told her what was on his mind. And Isabel was willing to listen carefully. They sit together as if they were close friends. But the unexpected was about to happen. One day Isabel and Georges were rocking in bed. Georges suddenly had a heart attack and stopped breathing. Isabel rushed to give him artificial respiration. But to no avail, Isabel was at a loss for words. She fell to the ground in a panic. So she rushed to treat the wound and flood the hotel as fast as she could. A few days later, the police found Isabel's mother. The hotel security camera captured the presence of the person in full view. Isabel was there around the time of George's death. The mother couldn't believe Isabel would do such a thing. But Isabel's money was already in the closet. She had to believe that she had become a call girl. The furious mother came home with a lot of doubts and found Isabel and cried and beat her. This mother was beating her daughter like crazy. But this was not domestic violence, but a real reaction to knowing that her daughter was a call girl. The mother hated and hurt Isabel for what she did. But even though she was angry, Isabel was her daughter. After venting her anger, the mother still felt like talking to Isabel. She hugged Isabel tightly in her arms. Shortly afterwards, Isabel came to the police station to give a statement and recount the incident. Every word the police asked was like a thorn in Isabel's heart since she was a minor. So Isabel was given a lecture. After that, her mother confiscated her cell phone and computer. She found the money Isabel earned as a call girl in her closet. She planned to donate the money to charity. Isabel was introduced to a part-time job as a tutor by her mother. In the evening, Isabel saw her stepfather sitting on the couch and went up to him to chat. The two of them were having a great time talking. This scene was seen by her mother. So her mother takes Isabel to see a psychiatrist. 
Isabel acted as if she was very resistant in front of the doctor. She only gave a few short answers and dismissed the doctor. When she gets home, her mother wants to try to make Isabel mentally healthy and invites her to the opera. Isabel said no. She slumped on the bed and didn't say anything. Maybe it's the guilt she feels over George's death. Isabel approached the psychiatrist and confessed the pain of George's death because George's was the most respectful, gentle and caressing man among her guests. The relationship between them was equal. Little by little, Isabel also emerges from her grief. But there was one more thing she needed to accomplish. She turned on her old phone again and sent a message to her client for the day. But this time, her appointment was a bit special. She was George's wife. Alice's demeanor was elegant. Isabel explained her past with George's. But instead of blaming Isabel, Alice took her to room 6095. Alice pays her to come in and sit with her in the room and tells Isabel the story of how she and George's met. Then they both lay down on the bed. Isabel drifted off to sleep under the touch of George's wife. When Isabel woke up with a start, Alice is gone, leaving Isabel alone in the room. She looks at herself in the mirror and smiles brightly. Isabel now knows herself and learns to cherish herself. The director tells us through Isabel's young and beautiful face that it doesn't matter. Being different from others, different from the world, does not affect your ability to become your true self.